Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Prime Analog Records. I am Matt, and uh, thanks for tuning in. One of my buddies in the VC, Scott, um, over at the Pressing Matters, he did a video just, um, just I think it was this week, um, talking about um, beginning jazz titles, and I thought that was a really good uh, setup. So what I told him I was going to do is I was going to do the progressive thing and my picks. And I know there's a lot of stuff out there, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk for a little bit about um, the progressive jazz that I have in my collection. And I think that um, you can start a great collection with this stuff. Um, very beginning, I wanted to talk about how progressive jazz is. And it's like blues and jazz got all mixed up together. It all intertwined. And, um, and that's what mostly when you're listening to Coltrane and, and, um, you know, there's just a whole slew of artists out there, Art Blakey. Um, that's very bluesy kind of music and it's not, um, progressive. And, um, a lot of, a lot of you will probably, uh, not see this as a progressive jazz album that I'm going to show you here. But um, first of all, it's uh, it's still Harry after all these years. It's Harry James and his, and his big band, and uh, this is a Sheffield Lab, and it's absolutely incredible to listen to. It's a direct to disc um, recording, and this is fairly the way it progressive started. Um, it started in big band and a lot of brass and stuff like that. That's why. I also put, would put this into um, the same category. Um, Scott showed this in his, um, in his uh, collection. And I think this is a really good place for somebody to start as far as progressive jazz, understanding what the differences are from what I was talking about before about jazz and the classic jazz um, and black jazz and things like that. Um, and this right here is very different. It's a, quite a departure from that. Now, we're going to start moving a little bit more more progressive as we go. So I'm going to try to show um, some albums that I think that everybody needs to have in their collection. I think that this, um, Al Dimiola is an amazing artist. Um, I, I fell in love with his stuff the very moment I heard it. And this is the album that I started with. And this is absolutely amazing. This is Janice Dickinson on the cover, by the way, over here. <laughs> but um, back in her prime. Anyway, um, Al Demiola is some kind of special. And you learn a lot about the technique and listening to him play guitar. And why he was chosen by Chick Corea when Chick Corea was putting together what he believed was the ultimate jazz progressive jazz band this is at the same time where where a lot of different groups were coming out um and uh not with notwithstanding some of the ones i'm going to show you but this right here is what chick korea came out and i think this is one of their finest albums here um chick korea put together uh al demiola with this um uh, chick korea obviously his keyboards um then you had uh uh, Stanley Clark playing bass and you had um, Lenny White playing drums and it's just a magical magical ride and it's a lot it's a lot of fun to listen to but it's not so radically hardcore um, progression um, in the jazz itself it's certainly not smooth jazz um, smooth jazz is a very different genre and what I'm showing here is what I would I would say, say is progressive jazz. This is almost every jazz musician I've ever talked to um, has heralded this to be one of the finest albums that's ever been for progressive jazz. And you've guys seen it before if you've seen my my uh, Jaco Pastorius um, expose, I guess, um, and. Um, this is weather report, heavy weather, and this is an absolute masterpiece from front to back, you know, beginning of the groove, flipping it, and the end of the last groove. It's just amazing, and you should listen to it in the order that it was it was it was laid out. Um, it really it really matters, 
and it's a it's really a great album. Um, the next one I've talked about before too, and I don't know. I was talking to my friend today, um, John, about one of the one of the things. It's hard to pigeonhole some of these things because. Um, there's so many crossovers in progressive jazz um, into like Brazilian jazz and stuff like that. And this is this is still progressive jazz. Um, this is called this the group's called Caldera, and this is the the album's called Sky Islands. And these these albums are not very expensive. The ones that I'm showing here, they're not very expensive. You should be able to find them for five, ten bucks, and they will really turn you on to some amazing musicians and an amazing um, play. But this is the, almost all these guys in that group are almost every one of them is South American. So, all right. Now this next one is an absolute um, classic. Everybody needs to have this in their progressive jazz um, library. And this Herbie Hancock headhunter. And this is a, a, a really beautiful version of it. It's music on vinyl again, one of my favorite titles. And it's just, it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's and it, and it teaches you jazz progression and the way it works. This was another one that I was talking about to to my friend about this album, and I love this album, but um, but I don't know where it falls. It's it's progressive jazz for sure, but there's also some points where it could be mistaken, mistakenly called smooth jazz, and this certainly has Brazilian notes in it, the way it, the way it is. So um, it's uh, it's a it's the Rippingtons, and this is called Tourist in Paradise, and it's a great album. I mean, it's just and it's just, um, but I believe this was done digitally. I believe that that it was it's on the GRP label, which generally shows that it's digital. I know there's digital in it, so it's not going to be a direct one step or anything else like that. But I'm throwing this in, and it's kind of a curveball because I love this bass player, Mark King, and he plays the way his playing is is very jazz very progressive jazz there's nothing about this is even though he, they had some pop hits there's really no pop about this group uh if you listen to them and if you really want to listen to them well go on youtube and watch some of their videos about their playing live it's incredible it's it's just uh level 42 is is a totally different level and i certainly wouldn't call it pop um I certainly wouldn't, even though they've charted some some uh, some hits. All right, we're going to go into another one that this has. You know, there's it's not pop. There's a, I don't know where where you would put Joni Mitchell, but Joni Mitchell is far from pop. She was pop back in the in the seventies, but she's not pop anywhere in anywhere near this this was 76 i think she did this and this was so far ahead of its time and this is totally progressive jazz um he's got some of the best jazz players in the world on this including jaco pastorius but it's a great album and i think this should be in everybody's jazz library because this, this is totally jazz all right so here we're gonna get um we're gonna get, this is a little bit this is a little bit uh, more progressive than the last album that I showed, but um, this is on ECM label, which is a high-end label from Germany, um, and it's a really beautiful copy. But Pat Metheny Group um, Off Ramp is this, and it's just really an incredible album. I I got this back when I was in high school, I believe, or it may have been the the first year of college, but unbelievable this is just a masterpiece he and lyle mays create such a mood and a feeling um that it's just it's it's just it's just different than just regular straight up jazz um, now we're going to move into a totally different place here because now we're coming into the really progressive stuff and it's it's i think you should start with the stuff that i showed you before um, before you move into this, th to these titles here, because these are wildly progressive and you'll, you will, see, I mean, this is Miles Davis in a silent way. 
and another beautiful copy. Um, it's uh, it's it's beautiful. It's done well. It's uh, but this album is wildly progressive, and uh, you'll be sitting there saying to yourself, "Pick a key," because it's it's all over the place, and it sounds almost like it's uh, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. But there is, and and that's why I said you have to kind of start and move your move yourself up the ladder or up the chain um, to understand where this stuff is coming from and why they're playing like this. This album right here, I got, <laughs> and I think I've talked about it before, but this is so wild. I, I love I, I love uh, Wayne Shorter. You know, rest in peace. He just he just passed away. Um, and I love Esperanza Spalding. She's a bass player. She plays upright a lot. This album right here, live at the Detroit Jazz Festival, is a great double album. But if you're not, if you, if you, if you if you jump over to this to start with, you're going to be very disappointed. You're going to have a lot of trouble following what's going on. I think that it's. You know, the, all these albums that I'm showing you basically are audiophile recordings. And uh, so so they sound, musically, they sound amazing. Um, but I have to tell you that I think that, you know, if you progress the way I've shown you from the very beginning and the beginnings of it, like the Brubeck um, album, and then go into, you know, some weather report and things like that, you'll 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 find your way a little bit better in this because... This can be very confusing. I've got um, a few. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, of albums that I, that I, are honorable mentions, and since I had them out for my last video, I figured I'd show them again. This uh, this first came out in 1982, um, and this is called Truth Liberty. Oops. Sorry about that. My uh, my monitor cut out, so I had to go replace the battery. Anyway, so. Um, I had this out still um, from my last video, and it's it's uh, Truth, Liberty, and Soul by Jaca Pastorius, and it's three records in here. And this will actually is a very good one to start on as far as progressive jazz because it is very in depth. It's beautifully recorded. Um, you can't go wrong with this. <clears throat> one other one th is Word of Mouth. And this is Jaco Pastorius again. The, the big thing about this album here is that <clears throat> you have to take it in pieces because he is all over the place in here. I mean, he's he started out this uh, this song, this album with a song that actually his uh, <clears throat> Warner Brothers, his his label was really furious about him starting it out. And he, they had already handed over um, all the control to him for this recording. He started out with this fast and furious and wildly progressive song called Crisis. Um, but there are so many beautiful pieces that are within this, that, that album, that these might be a great place to start your collection. So that's my video. I was just trying to, trying to give you a little taste of what I listen to and what I like to listen to and, and, uh, and an understanding of what, um, progressive jazz really is um tell me in the comments what your favorite ones are i really appreciate it i'd like to hear it i want to i want to i want to learn from everybody in the vc and the more people that engage in this in these kind of things it helps it helps me it helps me um it helps me uh learn and try you know try new artists but you know, mainly the way I've learned through the years and through 30, 30, 40 years of, 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 uh, of collecting is I go through the credits. And, um, and when you have these big, beautiful albums that have all those credits in there, read those credits. Those will help you. They always will. They, will, it's, it's, they, they guide you right where you need to go. And you've got this great tool in Discogs. If you like the way this guitarist plays and stuff like this, Go plug his name in, and then look at the credits. That they'll have they'll have the credits right there, where you're looking at the price and all this kind of stuff. There's also a spot for notes and for credits, which really tells you a whole lot about each artist. It tells you who's on what, and gives you suggestions for where you can go. 
So anyway, that's my video. I hope it wasn't too long and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. All my best.